it also occurred to me as you were speaking that uh, we have a Mossad agent who spoke at a conference organized by a person by the name of Osama. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's something that uh, Michael alluded to in his presentation which I just want to highlight and that's one of our, you know, we often say let's copy this model there, let's, if we've done it in X, why can't we do it in Y? It's not a matter of copying or replicating a model, it's a matter of adapting it to suit local circumstances. I think that's a very important point that needs to be kept in mind. Um, I would now, in the interest of time, like to call Mr. Mahabir Poon to speak about the Nepal Wireless Project. And I think we'll have some interesting perspectives from across the border, as it were. Thank you very much. My name is Mahabir Poon. I would like to talk about Nepal wireless. When you hear the title Nepal wireless, you might, you know, uh, misunderstand that, you know, Nepal wireless is a wireless network that is covering the whole Nepal. It's not that. So next slide, please. So this is the place I was born and grew up, you know. I am one of the luckiest, uh, you know, boys from the villages who got opportunity to go to study in America and, uh, you know, one of the millions. And then, after I finished my education, I went back to the village because I didn't want to work. Okay? So, next. So, now, after I went back to the village, you know, I didn't know what to do, so, so I just got involved in many uh, field and uh, these are some of the fields and I do everything what I can do as long as that helps people. I don't mind doing things even if it is illegal, you know. <laughs> if it helps the people, I do it and uh, there are several things I am, I did in Nepal and I am doing in Nepal illegally. I mean, uh, government. Okay, next. So, after I came back from America, you know, I used to I didn't know what to do, so I started to teach in a school, in my own village, there was a school. So after we started the school, the, the main problem we had was the financial problem to run the school, to run this high school, actually, we started the high school. Next, please. So, in order to, you know, find money, I didn't want to uh, go to doors of, you know, donor agencies and, you know, NGOs, INGOs and uh, ask for money, I didn't want to pay, so I, I tried, we tried to, you know, raise money by, by ourselves. So we started many projects like this. These are some of the projects. Next. So this, you, in this two slides you can see some of the projects that we started to make money uh, to support the school. Because the government was not providing support to run the high school in the village. So when we started these projects, so we did that for several years, the main problem we faced was the communication problem. And because we were doing this kind of projects in different villages. I mean, in the area where there is no road, there is no telephone, you know, we had to walk. So, communication was very a big problem. Like just to send one message to, from one village to another village, or getting message from around, it was very difficult. If, if somebody has to walk several days, you know, that's why. Next. So, we started this. And another thing is, no, uh, in the schools we did not have money to buy computers, but what we did is, is you know, we, we asked the people coming from, you know, different countries to bring whatever, you know, used computer parts they could bring and uh, just build the computers in a wooden box and the building a computer lab. Next. So we built several computer labs like this in the rural areas. So after doing this, next please. So after doing this, what we felt is, no, we need internet or we need at least some communication means in the villages because you know to get connected to the outside world and also to uh, connect its villages so we decided to build our own communication system because this is the area where there was no communication system no internet service provider no telephone operators were providing any services in that area and there was no road again next please so but we didn't know anything how, how we could do that. And we did not, and it was a time in 2001 actually, it was you know, completely illegal and the banned to use any kind of wireless equipment in Nepal because of the insurgency. There was no way to get, you know, 
uh, wireless equipment, any, any kind of uh, accessories, you know. That's why uh, what we did is, you know, I asked many university students in America just to, for help to smuggle these equipment to Nepal. <laughs> you know, they came and they brought the you know, wireless equipment, and, uh, but the main problem, the wireless equipment was small, they could put it in their bag and bring it in through the custom. Uh, with a big notice, but like building the antennas were difficult, so we had to devise our own antennas, a different kind of, and, uh, and we did not have money, so we built a relay station like this. Next, please. So several uh, relay stations like this, actually these are TV antennas we use. Oh, okay, next. So doing this, in 2002, we became able to connect this village from the nearest city to the wireless. So after that, then from 2000, next, so next, next, so these are, you see, uh, this is some of the relay stations uh, we built at uh, that time uh, to connect several villages. Next, please. So now, in the last, you know, eight years, we have built uh, several wireless network like this in the Himalayan region. You know, these are the villages that are connected through wireless. So it is easier, I mean, our experience to provide some support. Next. Uh, this is local e-commerce, what we call is, uh, so we help the places to put their uh, products in the local website to, uh, you know, uh, so that if anybody needs something, then they can, you know, get uh, the information about the site, where they have this information, who owns it, which village has it, and how much it costs. It's a long story, I, I, don't, I don't have time to tell. Next, please. Uh, we also have this hotel booking system because in that area we have, this is the trekking area, there are several community lodges, you know, uh, there are homestay management uh, done by the communities, so uh, we have uh, uh, built this system uh, so that people can book the hotel or lo uh, the village uh, for the stay. Next. Uh, remittance is, uh, you know, uh, the, for the tourists, you know, who have in the credit card and who run out of money, and they, then they can use their credit card in the village because there is no ATM machine in the village. No banks are there. So it's just they go to the website and, uh, you know, uh, process that um, their uh, credit card and uh, they can pay their bill using the, um, uh, you know, system. Next. So we also have now we have this uh, remote, even if these are remote villages, you know, we, our students are connected to the students in, in Australia, in America, and you know, they can have some kind of discussion, chatting, you know, this is a kind of uh, uh, link uh, with uh, schools in other countries. Next. So uh, this is, I think, the last, let me see, not the last. Okay, sustainability, uh, we started this, you know, for non-profit making purpose, but we have to make some money to make it sustain, at least. So what we are doing is since all these networks, you know, in the, in the villages, we have some, you know, committees there, management committee. The com management committees are given full responsibility uh, to run the, you know, center, to take care of the, you know, relay station, the equipment, everything, and uh, uh, still there is operation and maintenance cost and the uh, cost for the internet bandwidth that they have to pay. So each village or center is uh, they, they is paying from 1,000 to 1,500 rupees per month uh, for that. And that's how we are, you know, sustaining these projects uh, now. And we haven't thought, we are thinking about some more business model like uh, Michael was talking about. Thanks. Next. And... Uh, and uh, I think this is my last, last slide. This is the map of Nepal. In the southern part of Nepal, you see this red line. That is the optical fiber line. Actually, the government of India helped to build in, in, in Nepal. But in Nepal case, it is not possible. I mean, not, not, not in Nepal, India, everywhere. It is not possible to build optical uh, you know, fiber line like that in every corner of the country. You can build it in the big cities, connecting big cities in the main highways, but it is not possible to build optical fiber line and uh, to the last mile. So the only way to get to the last mile, the village, is the wireless. 
So we can use the wireless technology to reach, you know, all these point sites, everything. So next, please. So that's my last, you know. I am involved with several you know, organizations like that because we build wireless, we have to build our own wireless network to connect the villages and then we have to provide the services for that we have to work with, you know, uh, as a partner with many organizations. Thank you very much.